joining us tonight for, um, for Bible study. We pray and hope that um, that you have been in good company this week since the last time we spoke and that the prayers that you have put forth before God, that he is in the process of answering them and that your faith is intact. Yes. Uh, before we get into the word of God, let's go to God uh, in prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to look at your word tonight. We ask, oh Lord, that you would bless this time, that you would remove every single distraction or hindrance, Father, the things that we need to do later. Cause us to um, intently um, listen to your word that we may apply it, Father, for your word declares that it is life to all of our flesh. And we ask, oh Lord, that you would... Um, just minister to us as the word goes forth. We ask, Lord, that you would bless a pastor as he um, delivers the revelation you have provided, O oh Lord, and that you would increase the seed, Father, that in due season it produces a bountiful harvest. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Bless God. Bless God. Uh, tonight, uh, the title for, for the word, for the work, is Do Not, do not Lose Hope. Do not lose hope. And it's going to come from the book of Habakkuk, um, chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. But it also leads um, from chapter 1. So the book of Habakkuk from chapter 2, verse 1 through 3, with the title of Do Not Lose Hope. I'm reading from the Jewish Translation Bible, so it's going to probably read a little different. Then King James, no American Standard, and I need a message in any other such variation, version. But here we go. Uh, chapter 2, verse 1. I will stand on my watch, take up my station at the post, and wait to see what he will say to me, what he will reply to my complaint. Verse number 2. The Lord answered me and said, Write the prophecy down, inscribe it clearly on tablets so that it can be easily read. For there, for there is yet a prophecy, verse 3, for there is yet a prophecy for a set term, a trust, trustful witness for that time that will come. Even if it tarries, hmm. wait for it still, for it surely will come without delay. That's God. That's God. And um, the, the common version we hear is the King James, and it says, write the vision. And make it plain upon the tablets, that he may run that readeth it. So that was a Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Yet again, we're talking about don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. Um, for, for you all that don't know who Habakkuk is, um, he is one of the minor prophets. He's called a minor prophet because he, doesn't, he does not do a lot of prophecy uh, in his book. He's... He's pr prophetically announcing one particular thing of, of his book. So are the other minor prophets that are in the book. They're very short prophets. They're prophets, powerful men of God. But they're not like the Isaiahs or the Ezekiels or the Jeremiahs of, of the word. Um, but he yet and still, he has a powerful message in, in this very short thing. Uh, some of the other minor prophets are um, Joel... And uh, Hosea, 
uh, Amos, just to name a few of our minor prophets in the, in the Word, in the Old Testament. Um, <clears throat> don't lose hope. A very interesting complaint that um, Habakkuk has in chapter 1. And he's basically, he's dealing with the troubles of the world. He's looking out, looking out of his window, and he sees all of the havoc, all of the mayhem, all of the hell, all of the destruction, all of the, the chaos. And he's asking God, when will you step in? When will you come in and with your mighty sword and consume these things? Will, when will the change occur? When will all the pillaging stop? When will all the struggling stop? When will the resistance and the frustration end? When will the sickness and all that? When will, when will that come? Because it's not only is it a burden or, and to, to my spirit, it's also bearing down on the sakes of those that you love. When will it come? And he makes this in a complaint form. Well, he's fussing. He's, he's, he's really upset because he knows who his God is. He knows who his God is, what his God is capable of. But yet it seems that God is allowing everything just to occur. So if we take that and roll that to 2019. And we look back over the last couple of years, 10, 10 15 years or so, and we look at all of the things that have gone on. I imagine you and I could have the same complaint. God, when is this going to end? When will you step in? When will you stop the murdering? When will you stop the molestation? When will you stop the abuse? When will you stop the abduction? When will you stop the, the, just the struggle, the, the tyrant, the blatant disrespect of your people? When will you step in and do something about it? He says, well, while I'm complaining, I'm still going to be at my post. So that's the first thing I want to mention to you, is that even though you are aware, we are aware of the situations that are before us, the struggles, the issues, you still have to be at your post. Whatever your post is, that's your work. Whatever your assignment is from God, you still have to occupy your post. Um, the Bible says that be um, not weary in, in well-doing. In, in well For in due season, due season you shall reap if you faint not. So you got to be at your post. you got to be still doing whatever God called you to do, regardless of what's going on in the world. If God calls you to pray, to be praying, to be interceding, then while this is still going on, still be praying and interceding for all those that are praying and interceding for others. You still do what God calls you to do. If God calls you to go minister to the homeless, then you still go minister to the homeless. If he calls you to go to jail ministries, to the juvenile detention centers, to hospitals, to minister in your break room, to go minister at schools, whatever he calls you to do, you still show up to your post, even with all of the troubles, the trials, the tribulations that are going on. You still have to show up for your assignment. Mm -hmm. Habakkuk said, I'm going to take my post and I'm going to wait and see what he's going to say about my complaint. And the Lord had an interesting uh, declaration that he made to Habakkuk. It wasn't necessarily this long or, or long drawn out prayer of how powerful and, and great he is or response of how powerful and great he is. He got straight to the point. He said, this is what I need you to do. And it's important that, that you do this um, because your complaint is no different than everybody else that's, that's watching. You were just the one that was courageous enough. Uh, to make a, a complaint or an argument or, or you know, show your frustration, declare your frustration to me. So what I want you to do for all those that are going to come after you, I want you to take here what I'm going to say and write it down. Hmm. Place it in a place 
that people have easy access to it. Don't write it in your journey, in your journal. Don't, don't write it on a scrap piece of paper and put it under your pillow. Uh, don't send a phone text to yourself. I need you to take this here vision, this prophetic announcement that I'm going to give you. And I want you to put it in a place that anybody and everybody can see it. Whomever is walking down the street, they don't need permission to look. It'll be written in clear, clear, like a clear language that even the child can understand. Take here this prophecy and inscribe it and make it and place it in a place that is very easily accessible. That's what you have to do. When you began to complain and, and um, have a grievance with what's going on in the world, whatever it is, the the the. the message that you get from God isn't just for you to be satisfied. Mm -hmm. It's just not to calm your spirit. It's a message that you have to go out and declare to a dying world. Yeah. Because although you folk, although you vocalize your complaint, everyone else is complaining about the same thing. Yeah. People are complaining about jobs. People are complaining about children and detention centers. People are playing, yes. complaining about sickness, mm -hmm. high medical bills, lack, lack of employment opportunities. People are complaining about racism and bigotry, and people are complaining about all kinds of things. So when God gives you an answer that is soothing, you take that answer, you place it in a place that other people can have access mm -hmm. to it. So that's for all you great social media folks. If your Facebook is filled with only complaints, then when God gives you a, a revelation, hmm. you make sure that that's one of your things yes, that you God. post on your on your Facebook, social, your, your Instagram, your Twitter, your Black Planet, your MySpace, okay. whatever. They're going to come back. I know they're gone, but they're coming back. I believe God. <laughs> <laughs> you place all those things. All those, uh, those revelations that God gives you, you place them in a place that is accessible uh, for others so that they, their hope too can be restored. Restored, yes. Restored. He says, <clears throat> verse number three, for there is, is yet a prophecy for a set term. Now what that means to me is that God knows everything that is going on mm -hmm. and that in spite of its what seems to be a long-term thing, God already knows when he has set things in order to correct those behaviors. Prime example, God knew that, that the enemy would uh, deceive Eve and Eve would give the fruit to her husband and this would bring sin into the world. God knew that. He didn't wait until then to prepare a remedy he already had a remedy from the foundation, from the foundation of the world. Yes, he yes. already had a remedy. Yes. And he announced that a remedy as soon as the occurrence took Amen. place. Your, I have a seed, a son, that you will bruise his heel, but he will bruise your head. Mm -hmm. He had a remedy. So even though it feels like, it looks like, it seems like nothing is getting better, God has a remedy. He said he's already set for a, a thing and is set in its due term. He says, a truthful witness for all the time will come, even if it tarries. Wait for it. <laughs> even if it don't show up the day that you need it, he said, wait, wait for, for it. it. Even if it showed up and it's not exactly what you needed for what you complain about, wait forward because God knows exactly how to deliver, what to deliver, and when to deliver. So whatever that thing is, it will be consumed. So we have to get in the habit of not allowing slow progress deter our purpose and our work. We have to get in the habit where we are just continuously. For the word says that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. We have to be in the habit of praying in the midst of chaos, even if it's still going on, believing that God has a set time. That he's going to deliver the addict, 
in a set time. That he's going to deliver the homosexual in a set time. That he is going to deliver the thief in a set time. That he's going to deliver the adulterer at a set time. That he is going to deliver the murderer at a set time. That he is going to set the crooked straight at a set time. But you cannot abandon your post. You can't lose hope. You can't give up. You can't throw in the towel. Even if you feel frustrated, you have to ask God, I need a little more strength because the day requires that I pray. Father, I need a little more strength because the day requires that I pray. I need a little more grace. I need a little more mercy. I need a little more whatever you have to give me. I need a little more of it because I have not seen the manifestation of what you say is on its way. So while you have um, given me the assignment and given me the desire. Don't you know that when God gives you an assignment, right? He gives you a love for that thing. It doesn't make a difference if, if you're working on the job and you almost work for free. God gives you a love for that thing that you want to abandon what you do because you know that it, if, it, if it does not get done by you, it does not get done decently and in order in a godly fashion. So when God gives you a desire for a thing, he gives you a love for that thing so that you can accomplish that thing. God has given many of us desires for certain things, but because we get frustrated, because we get tired, because we don't see the things turning around as soon as we as we desire them to, we give up. God, I'm going to go to something else. I've been praying for this kid for 25 years and he ain't changed. She ain't changed. You know, I'm going to go do something else. But wouldn't it be a travesty for, for when God called you home? He said, don't you know, on his 26th birthday, because of every prayer that you prayed, I was going to do something for him that was so miraculous that he was going to change not only just his city, but he was going to change the state. You were grooming the next president of the United States. But because you failed to continue to stay at your post, hmm, he committed suicide. Because you didn't know that your prayers were keeping demons off of him. He threw in the towel because your prayers was what keeping him from running out in the street. But because you stopped, because you got tired and he ain't going to change, she ain't going to change. He committed suicide. And the bad part about it is it was his first time using drugs and he committed suicide. We have to be so engulfed with the works of God that it will consume not only just um, our time, but it will consume our minds. Don't you know if you just spend enough time with God that God will take care of everything else that you want? Mm -hmm. You have to spend the time with God. There are some of us that God has called into certain positions um, to, do, to do the work uh, immensely, intently, and continuously. Then there are some that he has called to do the works on occasion. Mm -hmm. so, so you have to know how God called you so that you don't give up on your post trying to satisfy the thing that you want the most. The Bible says that, and this is, I'm talking about money, because often we'll give up the, the calling for God for money. Mm -hmm. um, but God says that he gives us the ability to acquire, to acquire wealth. So if God gives us the ability to acquire worth now, now he ain't going to rain it down from heaven and make it pour out and you walk out the street and find a money bag, but he gives you the ability. So whatever that skills. ability is, or skill, thank you, Lady Gwen, that whatever that is, that itself will produce income, will produce money. So if you just stand wherever God told you to stand, that is your ability. And God will, as the word says, he will cause people to pour into your bosom. Mm. So I don't have to give up what God called me to do because I need money. Mm. God knows money is a defense, but God will do exactly what he said he would do for those whom he loves. But you and I, we cannot lose hope. Mm. We cannot lose hope. He says, even if it tarries, Wait for it. 
Even if you're getting down to your last nerve, <laughs> you got to wait for it. Even if it seems like it's already passed you by, time has already been spent. He says, wait for it. This is why he says, wait for it. For it will surely come. Mm -hmm. And will not delay. And will not delay. The, the season saying, saying that he's an on time yes. God. <laughs> he's an on time God. He knows exactly when to give it, how to give it, and what to give it, and to whom to give it to. Mm -hmm. We just got to stay on post. There are things out there in the world that are waiting for you to give up. There's demonic spirits that are hovering around in your family. They're waiting for you to stop praying. They're waiting for you to stop annoying the doors. They're waiting mm -hmm. for you to stop running around and shouting. They're, they're waiting for you to just stop sweeping spirits out of your house. For they can assault, assail those that you have been praying for. God says, wait for it. It's on the way. He haven't forgotten about it. He haven't given up on it. If there's an appointed time for this thing that you need, that they need, that we need, for it to manifest itself, you have to stand on your post. Don't lose hope. We know that we all get weary, but don't lose, don't lose your hope. It may not seem like there is no progress like the, the, the behaviors are just consistent, they ain't changing, just don't give, don't lose your hope. Um, for Gwen, Gwen reminded me that hope is, say it again for me. That hope drives your faith. That hope drives because your Because without a hope, you don't have anything to believe in. That's right. So hope drives your faith. And then that, mm -hmm. that Hebrew 11th verse, 11th and, 11th and 1 says that faith it's is the, the substance, substance it's of what things makes it hoped for. for. So if hope drive your faith, then there is no faith to consider. Hmm. Is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not, not seen. seen. You and I are given an assignment because, now watch this, Habakkuk was given, Habakkuk was given an assignment um, because he was a righteous man. Because he stood before God. He was given an, an assignment. You have been given an, an assignment. You just didn't get a complaint on issue because you like looking for complaints or issue. You were given an assignment because it's in your heart to pray for change. So that very thing that you're praying for was an assignment from God, ordered by God, because he knew that you would be the one that would be interceding, standing up, standing in the gap. Now watch. Everybody can cook a, can boil an egg. But not everybody are cooks. You can eat from that egg, right? But not everybody can prepare for a full course meal. Some of us are, are, are egg boilers, and then some of us are full course meal kind of people. God has put you in a position that, that you no matter who you are or what you are, you got to feed somebody. <laughs> and you're gonna feed them with the word. You're going to feed them with the word. So what do you do? I mean, what do you do when you just look out the door and you drive down the street and it don't seem like nothing has changed? When you go into the grocery store, people are still pushing and they won't say, excuse me. When you go slide your money to the counter, they, they, slide it, they slide it to you, won't put it in your hand. Or when they call you this and they call you that or they look at you and you won't get the job because of the name on the application. What do you do when it seems like you're still living through 1955 and nothing has changed? Hope. Don't lose hope. Don't abandon your post. You got to stay right there because God has already seen it. He's already declared it. He already has dispatched angels out. He's already given instructions and assignments. You just have to be at the post. Somebody's got to open the door. That's got to be you. It's got to be me. Somebody has got to open the door to let the angels come in and clean mm -hmm. up house. Mm -hmm. An empty house, unoccupied, there's no need for the maid to come in. But the maid of God, the bride, 
of God. Jesus says, I come, and when I come, I come with my reward, and I come like a thief in the night. So let us not catch us uh, unprepared. unprepared what our works undone. For even though it might seem like the season hasn't changed, the season is changing. It's just, it's, it's, it's where we're, it's the focus um, that uh, socialization has placed on it. They won't let us feel like it's changing, but it's changing and we have to keep up, um, we have to keep our faith together. So that may mean that we might have to change the way we worship. That may mean we have to change the place that we worship if we can't have the experience uh, of God. Yeah. Um, but don't, don't lose hope. It's a set time. <laughs> it's coming. He, never, he said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. It's coming. Uh, there's not a there's not a place that God cannot go. There's not a, uh, a secret that he does not know. It's coming. And it will be there. And it will not. Uh, it will not be delayed. Bless God. Bless God. Bless God. Let us pray. Father and God, um, uh, we love you and we thank you. We know, Master, that you are uh, the one true God. Um, that you, the Holy Spirit, and the Son, that they all agree together. And we thank you, Father, that you have allowed us to be ambassadors and be heirs unto the kingdom that we have been washed with hyssop and we've been purged and we've been made brand new. So, Father, we ask that you help us, as Paul says, forget those things that are behind us and we press uh, toward the mark, toward the high calling of Christ Jesus. Help us, God, to be removed from uh, the, the, the memory, but, but never forget the, the, the learning experience, but help the pain to go away so that we can be functioning and operating at our post. Father, we ask that you would give us a word, Lord, that will not only change our mind, but uh, something that we could repeat to someone else that will help change their, their thinking and their, their way of living. We ask that you would pour down your, uh, your manifold blessings and wisdom upon us, that us, your people, O oh God, that are called by your name, that you would begin to heal us, that you would begin to restore us, that you would begin to redeem us from all things that seem, uh, that think that they have their hand on us. Mm. We love you, Father, for reminding us that no weapon that is formed shall prosper against us, O oh God, that you have given us the victory. So, Lord, let us begin to act and to respond and to believe as we have already gotten the victory. Let us walk in it, God. Let us not um, be consumed with the troubles and the pains that are around us, but let us, as the words say, count it all joy. <laughs> count it all joy. Count it all joy. So we love you, Father, for all that you are and everything that you're doing for us. We surrender and submit our spirits unto you, saying, have your way with us. Use us, God, in spite of who we are and where we are, um, that we may tell a dying world that Jesus lives, that his word is true, and that his way is for all mankind. We honor you and we love you and we praise your holy and righteous name. Let it be all done. In Jesus' name, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So all of you, um, Trinity Tabernacle, don't forget that we'll be with um, Pastor Bass this Sunday. So we not we will not have regular service. Um, but for all those other people, all those other persons, uh, go find you a place to go worship. That God can get His very best um, out of you, and also continue to study. Mm -hmm. Don't just read, but study. Because there's, there's power in those words that we have yet to uncover because of the lack of our ability uh, to study. Um, but do your due diligence so that God can reveal to you uh, what the vision is mm -hmm. so that you can go out and declare it to a dying, dying world. God bless you and good night to you.